Hey guys, Glacial here. And in terms of difficulty, Mario is one of the easiest game series there is. This is a good thing though, as it opens the door for less experienced players to still have a good time. But this isn't always true. Sometimes a certain level comes along which pushes you just a little bit too hard to the point where you want to throw the controller at the wall. So today we're going to be taking a look at some of these stages and see which one is the worst. Now, for this video, I'm only going to be including levels I've actually played before, so unfortunately, Galaxy 2's Perfect Run won't be included as I still haven't played that game. Now, before I fully get into the list, here are the honourable mentions. Roiling Roller Isle, Bowser's Fury. The new Bowser's Fury mode in the Super Mario 3D world on the Switch isn't the most challenging game, with the exception of the Roiling Roller Isle. I was going to include this on the list, but it's nothing compared to the others. Super Mario 3D Land Special World 8 Crown Many Mario games feature a super challenging final level at the very end of the game, but the only difference here is that I find this stage to be really, really easy. I mean, it's definitely harder than the rest of the game, but that really isn't saying too much. Well now, let's get on to the real list. Super Mario Sunshine Pachinko Machine Sunshine is one of my favourite Mario games. One of the many things I love about this game is its physics. They're fun, they work well, except in the Pachinko level. It was a real struggle to pick between this stage and the Watermelon Shine from Gelato Beach for this list. After replaying them both, the choice was clear. When you start, it all seems fine. You jump up to the top of the board and use Flood to fly down into each pocket to get the red coins. But somehow, some way, the physics are all kinds of messed up here. It's extremely difficult to control Mario in the air and jumping straight can be hard. And nothing, nothing is worse than getting 7 of the 8 red coins just to have Flood stop working and falling right down to the bottom having to start again. Super Mario Bros 3 The World 8 Airships Man oh man do I just love auto-scrolling stages. These are hated for good reasons. Your previous freedom you had to just move around the level however you want is gone. And easily the worst type of this kind of stage is the airship levels from the final world of Super Mario Bros 3. There are two types of airships here. The bigger, slower kind with big projectiles, moving from ship to ship and fighting boom boom at the end. And then the much faster, much smaller ships with less projectiles but much more terrifying jumps. Anytime I go back to this game, I dread seeing those ships again. New Super Mario Bros Wii 9-7 Now I'm sure you can tell how hard this one is by just looking at it. This stage is a nightmare, reasons being ice physics. Nobody likes ice physics. The floor is covered in ice munchers and there are fire spitting piranha plants everywhere. So if you're not careful, they'll melt the munchers and make an already hard stage even harder. The ground is also covered in spiky goombas. The only way to kill them is with the fire flower and I'm sure you can see where this is going. Though this level is very fun to play, I like it a lot. Super Mario Odyssey Darker Side Mario Odyssey is one of the best Mario games that has ever been released, but it is very, very easy. With the exception of the Darker Side, the secret final level unlocked after beating Bowser. This is the longest level so far, taking about 10 minutes roughly to beat. This stage requires good platforming ability as well as good reflexes. It's made slightly easier with the available health hidden around the stage, and as well as the extra movement options you get with Cappy. Every section is pretty manageable with none of them being too difficult, but having to beat them all in a row with only one life is where the real challenge lies. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels C-3 This level is just not fun at all. Fuck this stage. The Lost Levels is known for being one of the most difficult and unfair Mario games of all time, but for me, this particular level is the hardest. It features springs everywhere needed to clear the enormous bottomless pits in the level, all while dealing with a lack of two and huge powerful gusts of wind that just love to ruin your jumps. <sighs> Super Mario 3D World Champions Road 
Now, at first glance, this doesn't seem to be too bad. The platforming is relatively forgiving and you can use power-ups and every character is available. But that's just the beginning. This level is incredibly long. Tricky platforming, super fast beat blocks, falling platforms, and much, much more make this easily the most difficult level in the whole game. New Super Mario Bros 2, The Impossible Pack. I've never beaten this, and I likely won't for quite some time. I've never owned New Super Mario Bros 2, but I did know some people who did, and some people who had The Impossible Pack. The furthest I ever got with this was about halfway into stage 2. And what made it worse is that this didn't come with the game, you had to pay real money for this. The stages are well designed enough, but it's not the most fun. One thing I've never understood is that the levels have checkpoints, but when you die you go right back to the start of stage 1. These levels test your abilities to the extreme, you got to master this game if you even want to stand a chance. New Super Mario Bros U, don't touch anything. New Super Mario Bros U is the first in the series to have challenge mode. This is probably my favourite mode in the game, it's good fun. But Don't Touch Anything is by far the most difficult Mario level I have ever played. As the name suggests, you aren't allowed to touch anything. You have a maximum of five things you can touch before you die. That may seem quite generous, but it isn't. It really, really isn't. And if you want the gold medal for this stage, you need to touch nothing. No coins, no power-ups, no enemies, nothing. You get the idea. The idea of not touching a coin is easy enough. But when you get a little bit further in, you realise how just how wrong you were. You've got to dodge all the lack of two throwing things down at you, avoid crazy fast platforms covered in coins, and pull off many, many frame perfect jumps. Thought you could take a lack of two cloud and skip the level? Oops, sorry, jumping on enemies killed you instantly. Oh yeah, and there's invisible coin blocks too. 